um, and we are going to begin. It's 11 o'clock, it's lovely to see everyone. Thank you for coming. A great group we've got here, a great gang. I've got a few things prepared and you're doing it at school as well, Bridget. That's amazing, I love that. I wish the schools, uh, more schools would do that. Sounds like a great school. What school is it, Bridget? Sounds brilliant. Must come over to New Zealand one day. My sister used to live there. She lived in Christchurch uh, and we visited a lot. I'll come back one day soon. Um, all right, everyone. Now, last week we did some pretty complicated stuff. We looked at schwa, we looked at strong and weak syllables. I want you to keep practicing all that sort of stuff. I know that I said I would upload a load of um, things for you to do on my website. Just got away from me. I, I need a producer, I need someone <laughs> who's gonna do it for me. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I haven't done any of that yet, but I did upload all the videos. So, you know, we've got that going for us. Hi, Aussie, welcome. Now, everyone, um, we're going to start Tekuichi Primary. Mm, cool, love that name. Um, we're going to start very shortly. If you have any questions on schwa before we move on, because we'll be coming back to schwa at the end of the week, but that's the last. Today's not about schwa, today's something different. Um, if you have any questions, any comments, anything like that on schwa, let me know. We also had a conversation last week about A-U-G-H. We did buy, bot, bring, brought, fight, fought, think, thought, seek, sought. Oops, seek, sought, think, thought. Last week, and somebody asked about A-U-G-H. There are 110 words in English that contain A-U-G-H, but really, we've got daughter, naughty, uh, not um, at taught and caught and taught and caught are the two past tense verbs um, that's basically most of the things I know about AUGH this week we're doing the lessons Monday Wednesday Friday the week after we'll make a decision we might go to Wednesday Friday we shall see but it's lovely to see you all all right so yes we were doing OUGH but also there was a question about AUGH one note that I want to give you all, I do look at the chat all the time while we are, uh, while I'm doing the lesson, because I want to make sure that I'm answering all your questions. If you write a lot of stuff, like what time it is, or just lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of letters, it's actually really off-putting. Um, it, it takes my attention away from the lesson. So, and that's called spamming the chat. And somebody got asked not to spam the chat last week and i'm asking you again don't spam the chat i know what time it is i've got a clock right there <laughs> and i've got a clock right there and i've got a clock on my phone i'm totally aware of the time sometimes we go over a little bit that's the way the cookie crumbles um you've seen these gym jams before but uh i don't think you've seen these gym jam bottoms these are my winter ones check them out aren't they great they look like um oh, i can't really see them that well but uh, they're all stretchy on the side, but they're flannelette. And of course they've got the Peter Alexander Daxons. So that's the outfit. All right, let's get going. Now, we were um, looking at open and closed syllables at one point. And I just want to revisit that really quickly before we start this. Also, Imogen, can you text Sash? She was going to bring a guest. Tell her it's time. All right. So I'm going to share my screen with you. We'll go to tiles. We're going to do tiles and board today. And looking at this word on the screen here, it's go, right? The reason the O says its name is it because it's at the end of that syllable. This is a one syllable word. Go, zip, hmm, one syllable. The O is representing the name of that vowel because it's at the end of the syllable. If I close off the syllable by putting a consonant here, that go reverts to a different sound. It goes back to its common sound, oh, and the word is got. I know you know how to read and spell go and got, but that's the mechanism of open and closed syllables. We'll do one more. Let's have the word me. M. E. Why does the E say its name? I think you know, I think you know. The E says its name because it's at the end. There it is at the end of the syllable. A vowel at the end of a syllable says its name or can say its name. So in an open syllable, that's one way you get a vowel to say its name. If I then close the syllable with a consonant, 
what I have there is the vowel going back to its sound e, eh, and the word becomes met. I've got a very special surprise for everybody. Here is Sasha, and this is one of her pet rats. What's his name? Um, Calcifer. That's Calcifer. And anybody who has ever seen um, Howl's Moving Castle knows that there's a character in there called Calcifer. And this is Calcifer, Sasha's pet rat. There are two types of rat in the world. There are ratus ratus, and they're the wild ones that you see um, running about, you know, the sort of black ones that run about. And then there's ratus norvegicus, and they are domesticated rats. They're domesticated like dogs. It's the same thing with dogs and wolves. Wolves are the wild ones. These are the domesticated ones. They're very, very intelligent. They're very friendly. They're very clean. And they're very nice. And that is Calcifer. There he is. We love Howl's Moving Castle too. Thank you so much, Sasha. All right. <laughs> Sorry for that little break there. Um, now Archer wants one. Yes, rats are really good, but rats are not little kid pets. Rats are intelligent. Rats need as much stimulation as dogs. They are intelligent, sentient creatures. They're not like, well, actually most creatures are sentient and intelligent, but they really, really need lots of interaction, lots of stimulation. They need friends, they need a big cage. It's a big undertaking to have a rat. It's not something that you just get lightly. Mice, they look after themselves, but rats need you as an owner to take care of them all the time. So if you are considering getting a rat, make sure you can dedicate a lot of time to them. Anyway, back to this, open and close syllables, here we go. So, you know that, right? You can close a syllable off by putting a consonant at the end and you can open it back up by putting a vowel at the end. And that's how you uh, make the difference between lots of different words. So with that principle in mind, I wanna show you something else. And this time, it's going to be on the board. This is where you get your pencils and pieces of paper. Just need a blank sheet. Yep, and I'm gonna get you to write some names, it's not sorry, some, um, some words down. I've got them prepared here already. We're gonna go through them one by one though, hoping that you can see them clearly. I'm going to move the camera a little bit further towards the board. How clear is that, Im? Uh, pretty good. Pretty good, fab. All right, so we've got a bunch of words here. And what we're going to do is we're going to see if we need to alter the base, right? So these are all base words and they are all words that can exist just on their own. You don't have to put a prefix or a suffix on them for them to make sense, and that's called an unbound base. All right, there's a bound base as well. We'll go into that one day when we do some more study of morphology. Our first word is hop, and if we, we are going to decide whether or not we're going to alter the base when we add a suffix. So I've got a bunch of suffixes in my hand. I've got the suffix s, I've got full, I've got n and li and ed. These are all word endings that have meanings. And I've got est and I've got er, she said gracefully, right? So we're going to, and ing, of course, everybody loves that suffix ing. So these are all endings. And we're going to answer the question, do you alter the base? Do you alter the base or do you not alter the base? Now, in the Spelling for Life book, I've written it as the 111 rule, but in the new edition of Spelling for Life, I'm, I'm changing it a little bit. It's actually easier thinking about it this way. Are you ready? So we're gonna get hop and we're gonna ask ourselves two questions about hop. The first question is, are the last three letters CVC? What do I mean by CVC? CVC, what's CVC? You heard of that before? Because I see this language in schools a lot now. Most primary school children that I bump into know what CVC is. No, they know what CVC is. Nice one, the Donnan family. Consonant, vowel, consonant. That's a pattern. It's a pattern containing a consonant letter, a vowel letter, and a consonant letter. CVC, excellent work. Thank you, Aussie. Good everyone. CVC. So last three CVC is the rhyme that you've got to remember. Last three CVC. If the answer is yes, then you can ask the second question. So in the word hop, there's only three letters anyway, 
right? And they follow consonant, vowel, consonant. H is a consonant, O is a vowel, P is a consonant. So last three, CBC, the answer is yes. So I'm going to tick it. Last three, CBC. Now, to further answer the question, do we change the base? We have to look at, are we going to put on a vowel suffix? This is the suffix that we're going to put on hop right now. Does it begin with a vowel or not? Is this a vowel suffix? What do you reckon, everyone? Vowel suffix? Does it have a vowel at the beginning? Right, good. So you've recognized a vowel suffix. In is a vowel suffix. So I can tick this one. Now I've got two ticks. When I've got two ticks, I have to double the final consonant in the base. I have to alter the base with two ticks. So hop becomes hopping. So I write hop again, but I must put a double P when I'm adding a vowel suffix. And now I have hopping. Do you see how that works? Double letters are very, very difficult for people to spell unless you know the structure of all of this. So if I didn't have a double P, what I'd have here would be an open syllable. Whoops, taking that P away. I'd now have an open syllable. What would this word be? Because this is a word as well. It would be hoping. Hoping. That's the difference between hopping and hoping. Do you see, remember in the early days where I kept saying 26 letters, thousands of words, we've got to find ways of making them say all the things we want them to say. Well, open and close syllables is one of the ways that we can do that without adjusting too much, right? So we've got hoping. Today it's hopping, double P. It must have a double P because it's last three CVC. All right, everybody got that? That's the easy part. Taking away this suffix again, gonna count again. Different suffix. S. Yep, I hop, you hop, calcifer hops. He hops. Last three, CVC. Well, yes, we checked that, and that's a, a tick. Is this a vowel suffix? No, it's not a vowel suffix, is it? It's a consonant suffix. It doesn't begin with a vowel. So, if that's a cross, if that's a no, you do not double the final consonant. You do not alter the base. Do you see how that works? So, the kind of suffix is really important, and the kind of base is really important. That's how you know when to double and when not to double. And the chapter in this on Spelling for Life is called To Double or Not to Double. But I think last three CBC is more helpful. All right. So if I were to add this suffix to hop, what would I get? It's a last three CBC, so we can keep it there. Is this a vowel suffix? Yeah, a vowel suffix is the suffix that's got a vowel at the beginning. So I have to alter the base. I have to alter it. Otherwise we've got hoped. Got it? So let's do some more. All right, we've got big. Calcifer is big. But Finn, he's even bigger. Now, big, is that a last three CVC word? Let's have a look. Well, there's only three letters. One, two, three, CVC. Yep. Is er a vowel suffix? Yep. Two ticks. So what do we have to do? We have to alter the base. Big plus another G plus our suffix, er, uh, bigger. See how that works? What about if we said, Finn is the biggest dog in the room. Biggest, est means most. Finn is the biggest dog in the room. Is that a vowel suffix? Because we know it's the last three CBC. Yes, 
That's a vowel suffix. Double G remains biggest. We'll keep that one up there, I think. All right, next word, stop. <laughs> stop. Is it a last three CVC? Can't, last three. See, there's four letters now, but we're interested in the last three. Last three, C, V, C, that's a yes. We're gonna add a vowel suffix. Yep. Two ticks mean you have to alter the base. Two ticks mean you have to double the final consonant. Stopping. It would be the same with stopped. It would be the same with stopper. There's a stopper on this bottle. Would it be the same with stops? No, it would not because this is not a vowel suffix. So that's where you would end it. Stops. No doubling. Okie dokie. I think you're going along well with this. Let's look at flat. Last three, CVC, yes or no? C, V, C. Does that fit the pattern? Sure does. All right. If you make something flat, you flatten it. Is this a vowel suffix? And Yes. Last three CVC, vowel suffix, how do you write flatten? See if you can beat me. Flat. Two ticks, so I have to double the final consonant. E-N. Flatten. How about this though? If you completely straight out, without any explanation, refuse to do something, you flatly refuse. Flatly. So with flat, we've got last three CVC. Is this a vowel suffix? No. So leave that base alone. Flat plus a non CVC suffix does not have its base altered. So do you see how it's important to look at these two things, not just one thing, two things. You can't double the T in flatly. So I'll keep that one up there. All right. Oh, I wrote flat twice so that we could actually look at the difference between those. So you can put flatly there and you can put flatten underneath or the other way around, it doesn't matter. Flatten, flat plus a vowel suffix, you have to double the final consonant. Two T's in flatten, one T in flatly because of this rule. All right, next word, neat. Last three letters, CVC? Oh, vowel, vowel, consonant. That's V, V, C. That doesn't fit the pattern. So it doesn't matter what suffix you put on the end. You are not going to double this consonant. There is no double T in any version of neat. So you are neater than me. You might be the neatest person on the planet. You could fold things up neatly. Doesn't matter, you'll never double the T because the last three is not CVC. It's VVC. Does not matter. Never double the T. You see how that works? And then the last one. Fright. Last three. CVC? Let me see. Consonant, consonant. Consonant, good heavens. C, 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 that's not the pattern we're after. So again, you're never going to double that consonant. Even if something is frightful, or even if you frighten someone, or if you get lots of frights in one movie, or so on, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter whether it's a consonant suffix or a vowel suffix, you're not going to double the T because it does not fit that pattern. See how that works? So we'll do frightful. That's a great one. 
that's the mechanism. So you can get any word, and we're sticking to one syllable words. On Wednesday, we're going to look at multi-syllable words that fit this pattern or don't fit this pattern. But right now, single syllable words, last three CBC, did you add a vowel suffix? If it's two yeses, you have to double the final consonant. That's lots, isn't it? But you've learned lots of that stuff already. This is just putting it all together in more and more complex ways. And that's what Spelling for Life's all about. So there you go. That's today's lesson. That is today's lesson. What I'd like now is questions. Does anyone have any questions? And then we will. Can you all see the poll? Can you see the poll? All right. If you haven't voted in the poll, do vote now. Um, we've got the Jim Jam Gang, the Peter Alexander Gang, the Lynn Lessons, Learners for Life, and the Jim Jang Gang is out, out in front at the moment. Um, but on Friday is when we'll make do the final poll and the final announcement of those four. Um, contenders for the name of our gang. All right, um, Edie, Amelia, you're up. Um, I was just wondering with, um, so previously like at school, I've been, I've been taught to use the word brang, but I'm pretty sure that's like not really a word. Were you taught that at school though, Edie? Yeah, they've used the word brang in sentences before. Great. I'm just, I'm pretty sure that's not a word. I'm just, I'm I'm just want to clarify that. Um, brang is sometimes used by people who haven't figured out how to form the pans, past tense of bring because it goes like sing. Sing sang, and then they think, well, if it's bring, it must be brang. Uh, but it's not, as you know, what is it? What's the past tense oh. of bring? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm sure some children may have said that. And it's definitely something that um, children do say until they learn this. Um, I'd be really interested in meeting any adults that said it who are teachers. That would be interesting. Thank you for that question. Was that your only question with that great background? Yeah. Okay, lovely to see you again. All right, who's up? Caitlin Lilly. Oh, sorry. Okay. Caitlin Lilly and Bethany. Um, what does the suffix en mean? It means to put into or make like something. So if something's flat or something's not flat and you flatten it, you make it flat. That en means make it this way. So you can flatten, you can frighten, you can tighten, you can loosen. And en means make or put into a state of. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. See if you can think of some other words. We've got it. another question. Awesome. Is it, is it, could you say an unbound base? Yeah, so there's two types of base. There's a base that can just sit around by itself, help and play, and all of these ones that we did here. And then there's other ones. Remember when we did the word distracting? And we took this word tract. And I know that a tract of land is a thing over there, but when that tract meaning cool, that's got to have something on the beginning or the end for it to make sense. A little bit like struct. This is not, this doesn't exist on its own, but if you instruct or construct or destruct, yeah, now you have a, a sentence that's called bound. It's got a not sentence, sorry, now that you, now you have a whole word. That's called a bound base. You've got to have a prefix or a suffix. It's a bound base. Whereas an unbound base, it's not tied to anything. <laughs> um, the number, Jamie, you're so good at reminding me. Thank you. Today is the number five, and I'm just going to share my screen with you for a sec because we're going to do five on here. Do remind me if I forget to do the number because it's important. Now, five is not complicated, but I've got some questions. With five, you go f I, v, and then what do we have on the end? What's on the end of the word five? Yep, some answers coming through. It's final silent E. So the sounds in the word are f, I, and v. What's the E doing there? Because it's not making a sound. It doesn't get a colored tile because it's not making a sound. 
What is the E doing? Let's look at the chat and see. Give them a second to type. I want to put it in the end. E, yeah, good. V is illegal. So the E is stopping the word from ending with an illegal letter. There's my beautiful arrow. Plus, it's also making the vowel say its name. Otherwise, if I took that E away, then what I would have there is fiv. But I don't have fiv, I have five. So fiv would be violating two things. Firstly, the I wouldn't be saying its name and the V, that would be an illegal letter. So that's what the E is doing in five. The weird thing about five is when you change it to its ordinal version. So if you're number five in a race, you come what? Fifth, right? Now it sounds like F-I-T-H, but actually the V converts to an F. F, V are the same sound. V just has a um, voice and F doesn't, but it's bo they're both made with passing air between your top teeth and your bottom lip. F, v. So it becomes a silent version of that. That's why the F is in there and then ends with the ordinal suffix Yep, fifth. So you've got to convert that. It goes all quiet at the end because the ordinal suffix is quiet as well. That's why fifth is spelt like that. It's really hard. A lot of people miss the F, but you've got to keep that F in there because the F is part of that original number root. <laughs> See how that works? It's like 50. Yeah, and it's like 50. Did you say that? Ah, oh, Imogen says it's like 50. Absolutely. Fifth E. And the F remains in five, 15, 50, and fifth. Do you see how that works? So that's the hard part about the number five. Do, do, do. See? Fifth. It's only V in five. Got it? I hope so. We have one more question in chat. What? One more question in chat, let's go. Um, is there a word with vowel, vowel, vowel? It's a great question. The answer to that is in English, we have constraints. That is, we have rules about how many things we can have together. And in fact, in all language, they have these things called constraints, um, which is what makes a language a language. So we in English spelling don't tend to put three vowels in a row unless we have words like this. I'm gonna write it in chat. Can you read the word? Did everyone read the word? That has three vowels in a row, doesn't it? It's the word beautiful. Now, how come that's not doing what we expect? Do you wanna show your screen? I will, yep, I'm just gonna put it up. Why doesn't that do what, we're ex what we expect it to do? How come beautiful has three vowels in a row? Because our constraints usually say not, no three vowels. You can have two, and that's why we've got the vowel generator that generates two letter vowels. But why is beautiful, and by the way, beautiful is a really great word to study because it comes from beauty. The Y goes away and becomes illegal I again when we add a suffix. Hopefully they've got full on here. Yes, they have, right, beautiful. But how come three vowels are allowed here? Why is it breaking what we expect? Why is it doing something other than what we expect? Three vowels, one, two, three. Who can tell me? Origin, correct. It's from French. In French, E-A-U is a vowel um, construction. You're allowed to have three vowels in a row in French. Oui, <laughs> right? O-U-I, they're allowed three. So we borrowed that from French. Sur, absolutely. Very good. Q. Uh, Q. Q, such a, as in? I queued up. I'm in a Q. Oh, Q-U-E-U-E. -U -E. I know, gosh. Anything, <laughs> anything from French, you'll get three vowels in a row. So yes, you can have more than two vowels in a row, but it will be a borrowed word from a different origin. We stick to digraphs in English derived words. Be a ute, beautiful. I remember you explaining that to me, Julia. You clever human. 
Um, oh, we've gone over again. Uh, I think, in, unless we have any more questions, I think it's time to go. It's been lovely. I will see you on Wednesday. Um, and we'll do a little bit more of last three CVC vowel plus vowel suffix. So everybody, time to say goodbye. That, did you hear that sound in the background? Oh. Bye. Bye. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. Someone from Gryffindor there. Bye. 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 Bye, Bye, Bye guys. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.